So this is the stadium that Toyoito designed in Taiwan. And it's pretty fluid in its geometries, but let's take a look at Grasshopper and see how we could do something like this. I think the best way to set something like that up is to make some points attached to some sliders to create an original control curve. And we can design in section and say, set this up along this curve so many times. And the advantage of doing this and using sliders is that you can move any one of these points in the X or Y direction and the line will update its geometry with the location of these points. And so if you were to align a section along something like this, being able to move the base curve will update the shape of the rest of the stadium. And you can do this by making some P-frames along this curve, which is essentially just saying, take these frames and array them on this curve a certain number of times and that's also controlled by a slider. We'll get to that in a minute. And once you have these frames you can take the section and align it to each one of these frames. So let me go ahead and get these out of the way. So that means all we really have to do is design a section. And let's start with this concrete element here, which holds up the stadium seating. And it's the same thing, really. It's a control curve with a series of points and a lot of other stuff. And essentially what this is all saying is just take this original control curve, offset it, extrude it, and cap it. And the advantage of doing that is that, since it's based off this original control curve, there's simpler ways to do it, but basing it all off this original curve means we can just move these points, and the rest of the shape will update its geometry with the location of these points. When it starts to get a little bit more fun, we can actually manipulate 3D objects with these points. So let me turn those points off real quick. I'll give you a quick preview about what this will be like when it's aligned on the curve. Right, so there's a separate set of P-frames, and what we're going to tell it to do is take this concrete structure element and put it on each one of these frames a certain number of times. And you can update this number to say 75 or however much you adjust the slider to be. That looks like a lot though, so let me just put it back down to 50. Not so bad. Go ahead and turn those frames back off just so they're not in the way. And I'll hide that. And this is the the kind of just straight extrusion because also in his stadium he has uh, we can't see right here, but he's got a line that goes all the way across these elements to join them. And that's pretty easy to make. It's just a line kind of taking a section of that curve and what you're telling it to do is take this section of line, array it along those same frames, and then just loft it and extrude that loft. So all that's really left is the truss and the, the piping. The, the truss is a little bit more complicated to build than these concrete elements just because there's a lot more going on. But it's all still based off of control curves. It's these, these points right here. Actually the original line is just three points. These three points. 
and that's just controlling one control curve right along here. So if you were to update the locations of any one of these three points, the truss will move with it, which is kind of fun to play with. And the code for this looks kind of intimidating. It's really not that hard. Um, it's just a lot. Just There's easier ways to do it, but if you were to base it off this original curve, it takes a little bit more doing just so everything will update with it because you have to take this original curve, offset it, you know, join it, make all these divisions and cross divisions between these points. But the final product means that you can play with it and constantly adjust it in this kind of way where you can tell the number of interior truss divisions and all of that will move along with the rest of the truss. And again, you can mess with thicknesses if you're not happy with those or the number of trusses. So let me hide that again. And the other projection of the points along these control curves is if this is one control curve for the outer part of the truss and there's another one offset you can tell a set of points to offset itself on each of these curves to define the location of some of this structure so that means you can change the location constantly too along these curves so you can start to see the power of of using control curves more often in some of these parametric designs because it means you can constantly change everything location with geometry just by moving around sliders. Um, the piping was a little bit difficult because it starts to get into lists and there's probably an easier way to do this. I couldn't quite figure it out so if anybody has any ideas um, go ahead and post them or uh, send me an email. But essentially what I was trying to tell it to do is take this list of points, right, orient it around these divisions and the goal is to have it go from point one right to point two to point three in this list to achieve this kind of twisting uh, revolving geometry around the entire stadium surface shape um, let me go ahead and give you a preview of this of this put together just so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So this is the desired kind of final product, is to take that list and you want that list to draw a line from point one to point two to point three and so on. And then copy and reflect or reverse that list to go in the opposite direction to create that kind of crossed hatched weaving. And you can also adjust the, the piping and radius of these. I'm not going to do it because it'll probably break my computer, but you can. So that means all that's left is the solar paneling, so let me go and hide these others real quick just so you can see the section again. Okay. And this one's actually fairly easy. We've already got the points that were used to build the piping structure, and all you really need to do is set up a list that cycles through all of these points around this truss. And tell, and tell the code to draw a line from all of the points that you've cycled through the list. And so you can adjust this again with the slider and start to get an idea of what a surface might be like. And you take this line, orient it on the frames that's already been set up, and extrude that. Um, and so that'll give you your surface. So let me give you a preview of that last thing real quick. This one might take a second because it's a little bit complicated. And once you draw this line, 
and extrude it around this original control curve for the entire stadium. You can take the geometry of each one of these pipes that's been wrapped around the truss and project it to this surface that's been drawn in the Z direction, which will give you the, the cross hatching of the solar paneling. So one final time I'll go ahead and turn on the rest of the code for you so you can see the whole object together. And the result ends up being a stadium or whatever design you apply this to that can be uh, constantly updated. Now I wouldn't try once you have something as complicated as this to go back further along and move the original curve because it takes quite a bit of time and there's a lot of calculation involved in doing this entire thing at once because essentially what's happening is you're telling it to go back to the start move everything over just a little bit and rebuild the entire object, object and there's nothing wrong with that but it doesn't have the kind of fluid control that's been demonstrated so far so if you want to do something like that that's why these more labor-intensive nodes um, have been disabled so that you can I, I recommend you you find the more troublesome data points and keep track of them so that if you did want to go back and change something that you can just disable them or hide them So the final result is a structure that you have in Grasshopper, or excuse me, Rhino. Complete with structure, surface, and everything. Okay, thanks for watching.